Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now this is the most requested moment in the Mad Minute series. It's a Mozin. People for some reason want to see this. Um, can't understand it myself, but there you go. We shall do our best as always. Now, we're always accused, a Bloke on the Range, of massive bias because of nationality or something. This is very, very silly. Except for this video. We have massively biased this video, okay? We are doing everything in our power to make life as easy as possible for Mrs. Mozin here. This is a Finnish model 1924, so it's not some nasty thing made from old railway ties or anything. Um, it is well lubed with magical Swiss Outer Martin Fett, exuded from the thighs of Valaisian beauties up in the upper valley up there. Uh, magical stuff. Uh, I think there's some fairy dust in it as well, so that will help. Um, also, ammunition. Privy. Not so great in and of itself, but it's brass cased. Selection of charges. We've got some Chinese uh, ones with tabs, like the very early Russian ones, and we've got some genuine uh, soft block uh, plain ones. We shall see. What else is biasing this in the favour of the Mosin? The interrupter on this one, at least in the preliminary test we did, appears to actually function as intended at all times. So it will even interrupt properly, or at least it did when we tested it. This is bloke on the range. Something's got to go wrong. Um, it, it, when we tested it, it even functioned with a full five rounds in the magazine. I've owned several Mosins in my life and only the one I've got right now, which is a 1952 Hungarian PU sniper, that's the only one I've had where the interrupter actually worked properly as intended. So, as usual, target is at 25 meters because we started at short range, so we're going to continue at short range. Um, and we are going to see how this goes. Uh, for full disclosure, I once shot a 1933 dated, so a very early 91-30, in a man minute competition. I think we had an unloaded start even, and I got 18 rounds off. So, uh, this finish one, it could go any way. Garbage rod! Just leave it like that, right? I'm just gonna make a point here. I didn't do any special prep on these clips, but they're the ones I used to use all the time, years ago. Not the Chinese ones, but the uh, these plain soft block ones. They're the ones I used all the time, before. That one went fine. Okay, I'm just gonna go straight on and do that, try and do that again, without a break. And, uh, This charger seemed to run, didn't it? Let's try it again. Okay.
jammed solid? Yeah. It's jammed solid. Ah. Uh. You got your knife? Yeah. Right. That should not be. <laughs> right, let's get the pliers in there then. And just try and... Two hands. Yeah, this is a three hand job. It's coming. It's coming slowly. I'm gonna get some brake free out my bag. I'm gonna get this dripping, and we're gonna give it one more attempt. Yes. Oh, this does not bode well. Right. Two clips, some loose ammo. Let's see if we can at least get 10 rounds out of this this time. <laughs> Another shot and you shot the cleaning rod. Oh! Wow. Huh. Oh, ah! Nice. <laughs> well, I'll leave it for now. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, I've actually got 15 out of it. Yep. Woohoo! Okay, so we have first try out in 27, then we've got a 246, 261, 345, 248, a reload of 962, 271, 262, 343, 348, reload of 836, 326, 578, 423, and finally 335. Now between takes there, what I did was I got inside the charger with a slightly oily thumb just to give it a little bit of help. Um, these these Chinese um, parkerized ones, they just they just don't run at all. Um, maybe maybe if you emery clothed the inside of them uh, and lubricated them a bit, but irrespective, that rifle got very sticky very quickly. I mean, in the first run, a few rounds in, it was getting sticky. Um, it ran a bit better when it's absolutely pissing oil out of every orifice. It ran a little bit better, but it was still incredibly hard work, incredibly slow, and I had two reasonable, in Mosin terms, reloads there. Um, I'm just trying to think back in the day what I did. Um, I think that my 1933 dated rifle that I had at the time was slicker than that one. It certainly ran better than that one. And I must have just got super lucky with the reloads. It's just, the clips are just super badly designed. They're, they're, they're almost an afterthought. And you compare this to the amount of 
thought that went into a Mauser clip or something. Or uh, I mean, the ultimate rim demo clips are the, are the are the Lee Enfield clips, where they put a lot more thought into where the forces go and how how to keep everything together. But that is that is just yeah. Hold work. I'm aware of, there are apparently some videos of people trick shooting Mosin's uh, at, at great rates of fire, but this is a bog standard uh, Finnish Model 24, and that was hard work. Let us see if we actually achieved anything on target because I was working extremely hard there. Not really. Oh, it's tumbling. Ha <laughs> ha. Look. It, it's not just it's not just the chap stuff. This is factory ammo. That is that's going through not quite not quite straight. Ah. Interesting. That's uh less than satisfactory. So to finish this one off in about two years down the line, it's quite a lot of backlog we've got here. Uh, there's a couple of points I want to make having reviewed the footage now. Uh, first of all, that was obviously a lot of hard work. The second of which I didn't mention on the range is uh, the bolt manipulation technique. Now, I normally advise not palming, except in situations like a Mosin. Uh, and I, I'm afraid I don't have the rifle with me because it belongs to Chappie and he's not here. Um, because quite a lot of the time you're gonna have to heal the bolt to persuade it to open if it sticks, I tend to open it with the palm of my hand and flick it back, and then I sort of hook my thumb just under the under the uh, the bolt knob. It's a short, stubby bolt handle, and then push it forward and then sort of flick it down, and that brings your hand into a half decent position to come back onto the lack of pistol grip and take the next shot. So it's sort of slap back hook down and back on and uh, back in the day when I when I did that quite a lot um, back in the UK years and years ago I used to get blood blisters down here because uh, the fleshy part of my of my uh, my hand would get caught between the uh, between the rib and the receiver uh, but uh, no pain no gain um, in terms of timing that was actually about 10% worse on the splits than the Berthier which is pretty miserable uh, and just for comparison I've, uh, I've done a graph of uh, the split times on the vertical axis against the shot number on the horizontal axis for the Mosin in blue and a middle of the road rifle so I've taken the 98k which is just over the two second mark on average uh, the one up near four seconds on the 98k was human error uh, we could technically ignore that so you can see just how much worse the Mosin is than a middle of the road bolt action. I thought it wouldn't be fair to compare it to number four or an SMLE because it's, uh, I mean, they were on about one and a half second splits and the Mosin is hovering plus minus um, three seconds. Um, so it's sort of half the speed and you get like half the number of rounds out, or well, a bit more than half in this case. Um, and the 98K was a 20 rounder, 20 round minute. And uh, I'm quite happy that I actually did manage to get 15 out of the out of the Mosin, particularly after that initial run. But as a general point, they are called garbage rods for a reason. Um, you have to move your, your body a lot to cycle them in the shoulder. And, uh, and you can see that I'm having to raise my, uh, raise my shoulder up. And in fact, the, uh, the guy that won the bloke on the range bolt action challenge took it out of his shoulder. And uh, there was a whole load of movement. But uh, as a general point, if I can keep it in the shoulder, I will keep it in the shoulder because it's generally faster and there's less remounting to do. But uh, yeah, that was a lot of uh, a lot of effort. So there we go. That one, as I mentioned at the start of the video, was uh, well requested. So let's hope it gets lots of views. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much to Kudutir in uh, Sion, Canton Valley, Switzerland, for the use of their awesome range. Thank you very much for the patrons who managed to make all of that possible. And if you haven't become a patron yet, please consider doing so. Link in the description below. And uh, see you again sometime. Bye.